Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here in the presence of God to dedicate this chapel to the glory of his holy name and for the furtherance of his work among his people. We will sing the Methodist hymn number 677, after which we we'll have a short prayer. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your loving kindness that has brought us together this morning for the dedication of your chapel. Lord, we have done this work and we call upon you, Lord, to come and bless as in the days of old, Lord, your presence fill the chapel. So we pray, O oh God, as we come and enter into this chapel, may your presence, your Shekinah glory, fill this chapel. That, Lord, as we worship you in this chapel, we will see your glory always. So, Lord, as we enter, may you enter with us. May you lead us, O oh God, that, Lord, what we shall do to stay, The blessing will be ours. As in, in that precious name, we be Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
name of the Uganda Police Church, Accra, we accept these keys. We accept these keys in token of the trust committed to us. Let us now proceed with the dedication. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will enter into it and praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we open the doors to this chapel. Amen. Amen.
this is the day the Lord has made. Let us all together say, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Page 15 of the program. Page 15 of the program. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within the gates of the house of God. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Blessed be the Lord who has made a way for us into his presence. May his name be praised. Amen. We will continue as we sing from the Methodist in 701. 701. hands, where your honor will dwell, and where your servants may worship you. We humbly ask you to manifest your presence here among us, that this building which we have erected to the glory of your name, and which we have now dedicated to you, may be accepted and sanctified by your spirit, so that all who may from time to time gather here for worship in your name, may be nourished in your love and made fruitful in your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bless Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior of the world, who holds the keys of death and hell, who opens and no one shuts, who grants that this house we now dedicate for the preaching of your gospel and the showing forth of your glory may always be filled with your presence and ever remain a refuge to your people. Amen. Holy Spirit, giver of life, our ever-abiding comforter, let your sanctifying grace be with us, that this place may be separated to your glory and honor forever, and that all who worship within these walls may truly be living temples of God. Amen. Blessed Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, by whose power, wisdom, and love all things are sanctified, enlightened, and made perfect. Enable us by your power, illumine us by your truth, perfect us with your grace, that now and always, we and those who shall gather here may worship, glorify, adore, and praise you in spirit and in truth, O eternal Trinity, now and ever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Continue as we sing from the Methodist in number 702. 702.
please be seated. Let us turn to page 16 of our program. Page 16. Where you have people, that is our response. So when we get to that point and we stand, we want everyone to be part of it. This is the time we want to dedicate this chapel, the things in it, as well as ourselves to God on this day. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we rejoice that God has put it into the hearts of his people to build this chapel to the glory of his name. We, the heads of churches, now accept the building that, may be that we may dedicate it and set it apart for the worship of the almighty God and the service of his people. Let us therefore as we are assembled, solemnly dedicate this place and ourselves to its proper use and sacred uses. Let us now stand. To the glory of God the Father, who has called us by his grace, to the honor of his Son, who loved us and gave himself for us, to the praise of the Holy Spirit, who illumines, illuminates and sanctifies us for the worship of God in prayer and praise, for the preaching of the everlasting gospel, for the celebration of the holy sacraments, for the comfort of all who mourn, the strength of those who are tempted, for lie to those who seek the way of salvation, for the sanctifying of family life, for teaching and guiding the young, for the perfecting of the saints, for the conversion of sinners, for the promotion of righteousness, for the extension of the kingdom of God in the unity of faith, in the bond of Christian brotherhood, in charity and goodwill to all, in gratitude for the labors of all who love and serve the church, in love and remembrance of those who have finished their course, in the hope of a blessed mortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now together we say, we now... In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we dedicate this house and set it apart for sacred and holy uses. Amen. I'll now invite the heads to join me as we dedicate the objects that are here. First, it is the altar of the Lord. Let us now offer our petitions and intercessions to God for the blessing, for his blessing and grace. Grant, O Lord, 
that all who share in the sacraments at this place, the ministry of the word, and the fellowship of praise and prayer may know that you are in this place and may hear your voice within their hearts and may go forth to extend to the uttermost bounds of life our Lord Jesus Christ's kingdom. Amen. Grant, O Lord, that those who come before you, O throne of mercy and faith, to receive the holy elements of bread and wine, representing the body of Christ broken for sinners and his body shared for their redemption in the sacraments of the Lord's Supper, may meet with Christ at this place and receive the inward renewal of forgiveness of their sins. Amen. Return to the lectern. Holy God, may your word that shall be read from this lectern and the notices given for the information of your people be kept in their hearts for meditation and that the hearers may remember and do what is expected of them. Amen. The pulpit. Grant, O Lord, that by your holy word we shall be read and preached in this place, and by your Holy Spirit grafting it inwardly in the hearts, the hearers of the word may both perceive and know that what things they ought to do, and may have power and strength to fulfill the same. Amen the baptismal font. Regard, O Lord, the supplications of your servants and grant that whosoever in this house shall be received by baptism into the congregation of Christ's flock, may be so empowered by the Holy Spirit as to continue to be Christ's faithful soldier and servant until his or her life's end. Amen. Grant that they who in this church shall in their own persons renew the promises and vows taken at their baptism may come into the full membership of your church and receive such grace through your Holy Spirit that they may ever continue faithful in their life, to their life's end. Amen. We will stretch forth our hands towards the, the organ and other instruments. Holy God, you have given us the gift of music that we may sing your praises and tune our hearts to the beauty of your love. Bless those who play and hear this instrument and grant that at the sound of its music we may worship you with joy and glorify your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that as your people meet in this place to consider reverently and faithfully the affairs of the church and congregation, 
whether for session meetings or congregational meetings, it may also be that all may be one in the spiritual disciplines which you do enjoin upon your disciples, so that they may act wisely as well as faithful stewards in the ministration of the temporal and spiritual affairs of the earthly kingdom. Amen. Almighty God, who through your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ has called us into the light of your kingdom, wherein we may have fellowship with you and with one another, grant that here your people may meet in devotion to you. Here may your way be taught, your name honored, and your glory giving, selfless service through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. President, the government, and the people of Ghana. Our sovereign Lord, we are grateful to you that you are the Lord of all. 
that he knew all authority in heaven and earth belong to you. I thank you that by your grace you choose people to serve under you as president, through government, and other forms that you do grant to them. We pray that our president and all those who work along with him, taking decisions that will impact this nation, may dedicate themselves to you and allow your Holy Spirit to guide them as they take such decisions. Indeed, we pray for our parliament also in this light, so that the decisions they take will be in accordance with your will and purpose, so that we may receive your blessing and your name glorified, and we also be a nation of peace, as your word has directed us. So, oh Lord, grant us that, grant them that grace, grant them that courage, grant them that determination that they will take decisions fearlessly, but in honor and glory of your name. For all this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Shall we continue to pray for the sick, the poor, and the marginalized? Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, you who walked this earth and went about everywhere healing the sick and bequeathed to us a ministry of healing, Lord, we lift up all the sick in our midst unto your throne of grace. By your stripes, Lord, we are healed. So, Lord, we pray that your blood that was shed on Calvary may run through the bodies of all the sick in our midst, that they all will be healed and will be made strong. We continue to pray for the poor in our midst. Lord, touch the hearts of those in authority and who have the resources of this world to reach out to the poor and bring them out of their poverty. And so we also pray for the marginalized in society. Lord, open our eyes. Touch us, each and every one of us, who are disciples of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that we may also see the marginalized in our society and advocate for them and speak on their behalf and help them in their marginalization. Lord, help us to do all of this. We pray in the name of your Son, who is our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Beloved, let us continue to pray to the Lord our God. Gracious God, we thank you that for many years you have provided a ministry amongst police officers. Families, their children and affiliates, and other people who have come to worship you in this place for many, many years. We thank you that you have built a church for yourself. You have pulled the congregation together to make your name present in this place. And Lord, we worship and praise you for the servants you sent amongst them. To serve them, to lead them in worship, to teach them the scriptures, and help them to dedicate their lives to you only. Lord, there are many things we can thank you for in regards to this church. At the moment, we just worship your holy name 
that we have found a new face of the ministry you set in this place many years ago. May the Please Church continue to grow from strength to strength and make your word known to many and help many lives to change because of the gospel. And when you send your servants, we pray in Jesus' name that they may be received with love, kindness, and honor. And we pray that they will humble themselves amongst your people, that in leading them, they may see the character of Christ Jesus and Lord, your will, your attitude amongst your people. We thank you that you always hear us. And today, our prayers are coming to you as a holy sacrifice. Sanctify these words and bless them and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. The choir will sing for us. Thank you. 
Thank you, the choir. We will now take our scripture readings. Our first reading for this special occasion is taken from First Kings chapter 8, reading from verse 22 down through 30. Let us hear the word of God. Solomon's prayer of dedication. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands towards heaven and said, O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above and on earth beneath, keeping covenant and showing steadfast love to your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. You have kept with your servant David, my father, what you declared to him. You spoke with your mouth, and with your hand you have fulfilled it this day. Now therefore, O Lord God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, what you have promised him, saying, you shall not lack a man to sit before me in the throne of Israel. If only your sons pay close attention to their way, to walk before me as you have walked before me. Now therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you have spoken to your servant David, my father. But will God indeed dwell in the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, how much less this house that I have built. Yet have regard on the prayer of your servant to this plea, O Lord my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer of your servant who prays before you this day, that your eyes may be open night and day towards this house, the place of which you have said, my name shall be there, and you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers towards this place, and listen to the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray towards this place, and listen in heaven 
your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. Here ends the reading of the word. Our second reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 14 through to 22. Ephesians 2, 14 to 22. Shall we listen for the word of God? For he himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access to one spirit, to the Father. Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. This is the word of God. Our third reading is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew. We read from chapter verse 13 through to 19. Matthew 16, 13 to 19. Let us listen for the word. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? he asked. What do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hate will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The word of God. Before we take the sermon, we have a special song for this day, composed especially for this occasion. The choir was supposed to sing it as an introit. I think it was skipped. Bless this house. Um, after reading of the scripture, let us reflect on these words as the choir sings this anthem for us. Bless this house. The composer himself is playing the keyboard.
so grateful to you for this wonderful conversation. This song is a song dedicated to the Ghana Police Church, composed by New Love Anan. It is now time for us to hear God's word, and I want to share and lead us to reflect on God's word. Is the moderator of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana and currently the chairman of the Christian Council of Ghana. I'm happy to introduce to you the Right Reverend Professor E.O.Y. Mante. And before he mounts the pulpit, we will sing from the Presbyterian hymn number 263. Seven verses, but we'll sing only three. We'll sing one, two, and three verses. Two, six, three. Two, six, three from the president. We now make home from Kron Kron, Rabatina, Mekumam. Anona, Mena woe me. Now woe me be you. We will now maybe we fear ya.
grateful to God Almighty for this opportunity to share the word of God on this very special occasion. And I want to thank the leadership of the church, the minister in charge and session, for asking me to preach on this very, very special day. This day is very special to all of us, particularly to those of us who are heads of churches. We pass by this road all the time, and so we've been seeing the construction of the building as it's been germinating from, from the ground. And now we have such a beautiful building. I must say that this is very beautiful. I must say that this is very nice. I must say that this is very, 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 very nice. So allow me to pay great tribute to all those who have contributed, uh, particularly the church members and the leadership of the church since its formation in 1964 of this great church. Um, let me mention some of the ministers in charge, the chaplains and chaplain general. I'm thinking of the Reverend Yakwa, um, Reverend A. A. Beko, Reverend Ashwin, uh, Reverend Kwanza, and now Reverend uh, Chumba, and um, Reverend Chumba is not here, but please, I want us to really give him a very big clap offering. Um, some of you might not know, but um, Reverend Chumba served under me at the Trinity United Church. And when you see, if you like, a disciple who has grown to uh, lead a, a congregation, a big congregation like this one, as chaplain general, and help to put up this beautiful structure, I, I am very grateful to God Almighty. And I am very grateful. I really am. Papa Chumba, 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 God bless you. So, Don't come to the pulpit. I want to thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's give you a run again, please. A round of applause. Please. And the building committee, a very big thank you to you, really. Uh, this has been fantastic. This has been fantastic. I am grateful to God. Um, yesterday, I was thinking about some of the people who started this church, but I could not remember. I could only remember uh, uh, Miss Dakwa, and I almost tried to get all the names, but... If Ms. Dakwa I hear she's still alive, and if she is, we all salute her. I know this is Ghana Police Church, but I know that there are more civilians in this church than police people. Uh, and that this church actually was started by civilian associates of the police church. Um, you know what I mean by civilian associates? Anytime the, uh, pol the military or the police gather somewhere, they have their spouses, and their spouses have relatives, and relatives are relatives, and relatives are, and they start gathering, they start gathering momentum, and they start a church, and that's how come we have this beautiful church. And we are so grateful to God, and you must also thank the, the Methodists and the Presbyterians for providing the Protestant chaplains for this church. Uh, let's give the Methodists and the Presbyterians a big round of applause. When I, I taught at Trinity, almost every year we had a lecturer who was seconded to this place. Today when I saw um, Dr. Re uh, Most Reverend Dr. Abwajida, uh, uh, Abwajimansa's name, and I saw that he had been here for almost about eight years uh, when he was a lecturer at Trinity, and um, Reverend Professor Edisa Aysen, as for him, uh, he was a, became a Methuselah at this place. And uh, we are grateful, we are very, very grateful to all the Presbyterian and Methodist chaplains that have helped lift up this church. And this is a church of excellence. We are grateful to God Almighty for, for this. And um, I don't know how the system works, but I was sitting by somewhere and Reverend Chumba came to tell me, Papa, uh, my time is almost up. I will be leaving very soon. And I, today I said that when I come to the pulpit, I will salute you and say thank you to you. And wherever the Lord sends you, uh, wherever the Lord sends you, um, we will be with you. We will be with you in prayer. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, 
Now, I have chosen for my team this morning, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And my anchor text is Matthew 16, 18. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The team is, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let us pray. I pray, O oh God, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts will be acceptable in your sight, you who are a rock and our redeemer. Amen. So Jesus and his disciples got to a place called Caesarea Philippi. And Jesus knew that the disciples had been following him for a while. And for all the works that Jesus was doing and all the things that he was saying, Jesus knew that people would be questioning in their minds and their hearts about who he was. So he asked the disciples, who do people say that I am? And then the disciples said, we have heard people say that this is, you are John the Baptist, come back to life. Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are Jeremiah. And maybe those who don't want to think hard, they say you are one of the prophets. And Jesus turned and asked them, but who do you say that I am? But who do you say that I am? And I do believe that every follower of Jesus has to answer this question for himself or herself at any point in time. Who do you say that Jesus is? This confession that Peter made, that you are the Christ, the son of the living God, is one of the greatest confessions in the New Testament. It is very great because when Peter declared this statement, Jesus' comment was that I do, I do not need any other answer, for this has not been revealed to you by flesh and blood but by my Father who is in heaven. There are so many of us who try to contextualize whatever we read from the Bible, and that we cannot escape that. But if we conceptualize, contextualize the scriptures, we must definitely not escape this declaration that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus said that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Now, it is very interesting that when he says you are Peter, Peter is a male. The male word would be Petros, Petros. You are Petros, you are Peter. And on this, you would have thought that Jesus would say, on this Petros, I will build my church. But Jesus, the language was changed by Matthew, and Matthew says that, and on this Petra, which is female, I will build my church. And so the rock that was being referred to, as far as we are concerned, is not just Peter himself, but the confession that Peter made. The confession that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Any church worth its salt must be established on this confession that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God. Without that, there is no church. Without that, there is no church at all. It is Jesus who builds his church. Although he does it through people. I mean, since 1964, God, the Lord gathered people step by step, gradually, and this church has grown to be like this. There are people who would say, I started the church, but what you don't know is that there was some Holy Spirit that was moving you with the love and power of Jesus that was causing you to make it happen. At the end of the day, let us accept the fact that it is Jesus who established Ghana Police Church, Accra. <laughs> Albeit through human beings. It is Jesus who has brought us this far. And we must just salute Jesus and say, Lord, thank you for allowing me to be part even of the planning committee. Lord, thank you for allowing me to be part of the building committee. It is the Lord who always builds his church. And if we don't allow him to build his church, then the gates of hell will prevail against it. But if you allow him to build the church, then the gates of hell shall never prevail against his church. Now, the word, the word church actually means the called out ones. And it's not necessarily this building that we, we live in. We put up buildings like this to have more comfortable space to worship God. And sometimes people come and say, oh, this is too expensive. This is extravagant and so on. But if you have money, whom will you use it for? If you have money, whom will you use it for? If I have money, I will build more churches, nicer ones, nicer ones. Because God deserves it. Jesus deserves it. 
So we put our buildings like this to have more comfortable space to worship God in. Throughout the centuries, devoted worshippers have put up magnificent church buildings and cathedrals for the worship of God. Some time ago, I visited Cambridge and I saw some cathedrals that had been put up by some kings in the past, some of them in the 13th century. I went to Canterbury and I saw the cathedral and I, I couldn't help, I just, I just opened my mouth. And these were people who were devoted to God and they believed that God deserved the best. That's why they put up those things. And they, here is one today. And I do believe that the people here, you people here, you believe that God deserves the best. And that is why you have put up this beautiful edifice to the glory of God. <laughs> Almost always you will have people who, when a Mary is anointing the feet of Jesus with some expensive perfume, they will always complain and say, oh, if this perfume had been used to, uh, for the poor, uh, there will be no more poor person around. Who told you there will be no more poor person? When the choice is between God and anybody, God must come first. And God deserves the best. Hallelujah. But let me just share with you that when Jesus says that I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. As I scan through, through the whole of scriptures, from Genesis to this, uh, this, uh, Revelations, I was going to say Genesis to December. Uh. That's also nice, isn't it? <laughs> January to December, Genesis to Revelation. I, I see that there are four main reasons, or thematic reasons, for which the church is built. One of them is the spiritual witness of the church. Jesus has brought us together as a church to bear spiritual witness. In fact, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, we are taught that we were created in the image of God. Now, when we fell in Genesis chapter 3, God has preoccupied God's self with making sure that human beings are reconnected to God. If there's any problem with God's world, it is human beings, and that is why the scriptures spend more time on human beings. For example, there is climate disaster, environmental disaster, and a moral disaster. It's, it's because human beings have a problem, and God wants to work on human beings, and when human beings are corrected, then God's problems will be solved in this world. And so the church is established to help people reconnect to God. And that is why I want to bear Ghana Police Church in this beautiful edifice. When people come here, please make sure that church services are such that people's souls, people's hearts will be reconnected to God. Let's spend more time on spiritual matters when we come to church. I, I tell you, I, I, well, some time ago when I was growing up, there was one church that I grew up in and the catechists used to make the announcement. I always would remember on the um, first Sunday of January, anytime he would come, the announcements and Thanksgivings would be so long. I remember one day he was sweating so much and he said that, uh, <laughs> Now, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> and he was sweating, and the old ladies in the church were, Oh, I can't kiss our bro, Madam Sue, our bread, or one or penny bread. So all the young people were standing outside. And the older people were sitting inside sweating. Now, I tell you, we are in a generation that is different. When I was younger, the only television station was GBC, uh, uh, GTV, uh, Ghana Television by Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. And it was black and white. You had, we had no other choice. But now, if you are GTV and you don't do well, the other stations are there. And I want to thank God that GTV is still doing well. But other stations are there. People will switch. When I was younger, in my neighborhood, there were only about three or four churches. Four. One, Presby. I mentioned Presby first by all means. <laughs> One, Presby. Two, Methodist, because the presiding is there. Three, three, Anglican. And four, Roman. Those were the only four churches in my neighborhood. But now, if you are not serious, there are so many other churches that have come, are coming up. People will just switch their channel of churches and join another church very quickly. People come to church for spiritual reconnectedness. Let us not be foolish and make sure 
that we increase the tempo of things that are spiritual. I'm talking about prayer. And I'm not talking about just shouting. I'm talking about prayer. I'm talking about singing and singing more. Let's have more songs, more hymns when we come to church. Let us have more praying. Let us have more of the word. Let people know that when I go to church, there will be enough time for me to get reconnected to God. And let's not be in a hurry to go and do announcement. And sometimes even at communion service, people are in a hurry. And I don't know why. You are in a hurry for what? And there are people, when they come to church and we are about to preach, oh, not have any watch. The same person, the same person. Barcelona, any um, Real Madrid, the Bobo. Now your point, and I end the answer of my point. Uncle Mubi can who and cooperate. If you ask me about it, Obia, I didn't hear no. Me say, you're about a sorry, I didn't hear any redirection for spiritual focus. And if I bring what you ask, no matter you, you ask, do so. You're about sorry, I am my spiritual focus, you know, and not so. Number two, the moral witness of the church. The moral witness of the church. God is basically holy. He has to deal with sin whenever he sees sin. And this is a basic attribute of God. There are things, certain things that God does, but there are certain things that God is. For example, God is holy. God is love. He, he does not work it out. He is it. He is love. God is good. God is right. And this is different from the things that God does. And so let us not fool ourselves. Some people have misunderstood the concept of grace and love. But God's grace, God's love is a transforming grace. It's a transforming love. You cannot come to God and still remain the same way that you are. And so, if you have encountered divine love, your life must be transformed. Things must change. And so, please, when you go out there and you meet anybody who says that, oh, stop talking about LGBTQ and so on because God is love, let's tell the person that if God's love has not transformed you, maybe it's a different love. For the one who said, Neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. Has never said, neither do I condemn thee, go and continue in sin. The greatest good that any good religion does for any good society is its ability to turn immoral people into morally good people. And that is why the preaching of repentance is very crucial to the preaching of the gospel. Ours will be a, a better society if we allow the values of Jesus to be central to what our core social values are, values of simplicity, holiness, love, and humility, values of compassion, values of generosity. And sometimes when people are kicking against Jesus, I, I don't understand why. What, what wrong has Jesus done to us? Somebody who comes and says, I love you. Somebody who comes and is compassionate and is generous. Someone who comes and says, I forgive you. Why do people dislike Jesus? I recommend Jesus for any society. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the pure in heart. Love one another. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Do unto others what you want them to do unto you. Why can't we love? Why can't society just like a person like Jesus the Christ? Every society will at any point in time have to decide what its core values are. I plead with the church to bear witness to these key values of Jesus Christ and to let the world know how important these values are for all of us. He has made us the light of the world to show how important his values are. And so I want to also speak at this point to some of our, of our churches that have come up and are doing spiritual things. Some are doing so many spiritual, so-called spiritual gymnastics and there is no serious moral transformation. That is not of Jesus. Jesus revealed to us the holy God. We cannot worship God and stay away from holiness. The third one is the social witness of the church. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. When Jesus enters a situation, there is abundant life, life in all its, its forms. And that's why I'm talking about the social witness of the church. This is the holistic ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ who preached, he taught, and he healed. He fed the hungry. These are important things for Jesus. And that is why in the parable of the sheep and the goats in Matthew chapter 25, 
He said that on the day of judgment, the question will be asked, Lord, when did we do this? He said that I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was sick, you did not visit me. I was in prison, you did not visit me. These things are important to Jesus. What it means is that if we are saved by grace, our hearts are so transformed that we do good works. We don't place the good works before salvation, but once you are saved, good works must follow. When the word of God encounters us, it transforms us to become more socially responsible and more socially compassionate people. So we cannot be a country in Ghana with over 70% of us being Christians, and yet too many people are suffering without serious church intervention. I remember some time ago, I want to thank the Ghana Police Church. There were some few people here in this church who connected with me some time ago. I used to do some mission to some villages, and I would collect uh, clothing and so on. And I remember there was a woman in this church. She would collect clothing from some of the members, send them to me, and I would send them to the villages. I again remember one time when some people, there's a small group in this church, they said that the motto of the church is love and compassion. So they, they, they called me and said, Papa, um, we want some village place sir, that we can go and bless them. So one Sunday they all came with their cars, very nice cars, went to some faraway village, so I went with them. At that time I was the uh, Prebitary Chairperson, Methodist, we say Bishop, uh, and we went to a village and they really did a party for the village people. And it was people from the Ghana police chair. And I am very grateful to God for that. I'm saying that this is the social witness of the church. And the social witness of the church is as important as every aspect of the church's witness. And we must continue to do that. The last one is the environmental witness of the church. You know, in the Bible, we have what we call the first commission and the great commission. Because we could not fulfill the first commission, then there was the great commission. Now, the first commission was that God created us and said to us, his first commission to us, be fruitful and multiply and manage the earth. Genesis 1.27, Genesis 2.15. Because we could not do this well after the fall, God had to set in motion salvation. And so when he saved us, it is so important for us to please appreciate this that when God has saved us at the end of redemption in the book of Revelation chapter 22, there is another ecology, there's an environment where there are rivers, where there are trees, the leaves of which are for the healing of the nations. Human beings must understand this. That God has so created us in such a way that he put us in the garden to start with, and when we are fully redeemed, we will again be in the garden. It is so important, therefore, that churches must not sit there for somebody else to come and talk to us about environment. We should be championing the environmental cause because it is the first commandment that God gave to us. And so, these four witnesses that I've talked about, that is, the spiritual witness of the church, two, the moral witness of the church, three, the social witness of the church, and four, the environmental witness of the church. If we do this, if we do this, if we do this, we'll be doing things that are in the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ and no power will prevail against the church. Let us exalt Jesus here in this church. Let us do so through prayer, the word, worship, and holiness. Let us exalt Jesus here because as we have established, the church belongs to Jesus the Christ. It was he who said he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I am reminded of Haggai chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, where it reads, The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter temple, which is this temple, has been more glorious than the former temple. And that was prophesied in the book of Haggai. And the Lord laid it on my heart today to really just tell you people here that what you have done here, what you have allowed the Lord to do through you here is such an amazing thing that today, we are we Ghana police church in here? We are But having done this, having done this, let, God forbid that 10, 20 years later, not yet, but not even, Oh, God forbid. 
People talk about maintenance culture. I have stopped using the word maintenance. I use the word excellent culture. Excellent culture. Excellence means that, yes, you must maintain it, but do more than maintenance. The Boy Scouts rule is that any time you go to a place, by the time you leave, you make it better than you found it. And so this place must be better than anyone found it. We pray and trust God that 20 years from now, 30 years from now, and when we come here, it will even be nicer than it is now. And may the name of Jesus Christ be lifted here. And I pray to God that when people come here to pray, may God hear them from heaven. When people come here with burdens, may their burdens be lifted up. When people come here with sin, may they be forgiven and transformed. May Jesus be found by all classes of people who come here to worship. Because Jesus meets every class, every class, whether lower class or bigger class. Because even if you're an astronomer, he is a bright morning star. In biology, he was born without a normal conception. In physics, he defied gravity by ascending to heaven. In economics, he disproved the law of diminishing returns by feeding 5,000 people with only two fishes and five loaves of bread. In history, he has no beginning and no end. In politics, he came to serve and not to be served. In zoology, they call him the Lion of Judah. In botany, they call him the Tree of Life. In geology, they call him the Rock of Ages. I mean, even cooks, cooks who cook food, call him the Bread of Life. And drivers, even drivers, drive Alpha and Omega. Philosophers call him the truth. Engineers call him the strong tower. Doctors call him the great healer. He is Jesus of Nazareth. And may all classes of people who come here meet this Jesus, no matter what their background is. And may this be a place, a place where Jesus is met by everybody. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. May he be magnified. May he be exalted. May he be adored in his church, even now and evermore. Amen. I am not a Methodist, but if I were a Methodist, I would just rise and sing, Head of thy church,
being with us and helping us to see this day ever what you have done here in the Ghana Police Church at Christ. All we say is, Lord, thank you. May this church and our own lives always glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Shall we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed?
service will come to an end. A few announcements. invite the police protocol officer uh, to introduce police officers here for us before we continue the others. The police, there's nobody.
Uh, before the secretary comes up, um, two gentlemen just left. Um, Pastor Isaac. Pastor Isaac. They are from South Korea. Uh, Saran Church from South Korea. And they indicated that they will wish to be a part of this ceremony um, whilst we are dedicating our chapel. They have come to have a special relationship with us in the area of discipleship. Um, Pastor Isaac Yu is the one in front, and Reverend Dr. Tim Chang um, from South Korea. They are all here with us. And God willing, tomorrow they will be leaving um, Ghana back to South Korea. They've been in the country since last Sunday. Um, and we want to say a very big welcome and thank you for joining us and also identifying with us. Messages have been received from uh, Sarang Church in the past few hours. Those who were not able to be here, we are grateful to you for your presence. Thank you very much. We have the number one gentleman of the Ghana Police Service here in our midst. And I'm happy to introduce Dr. George Akufu Dampare. Uh, together, he has two uh, shadow officers also with him, DCOP, Mr. Abuaji Nyako. He is the Director General, MTTD. We also have COP, Mr. Edwinim, Director General, Human Resource, also here with us. Um, we also have another gentleman who I'll say is a friend of the police and a friend of the church. And I'm happy to introduce our brother, Ben Kofi, also um, to us. Our brother, Ben Kofi, has a special relationship with us here. And together with the family of DCUP, Patrick and Pewa are here. Wherever they are, please, can you stand for us to acknowledge you? We are so, so grateful to this family. The pulpit that we see there is in honor of a departed senior police officer, and the family contributed to that. We are so grateful. Thank you very much. We also have this lectern that I stand close by. Um, he doesn't know. He hasn't seen it. And this is provided by our brother Ben Kofi and the wife. We are so grateful for this donation to the church. Thank you very much. And we also have our new altar, a very huge one. And you need about six or eight strong men to even push it around. Last night, it was hell dealing with it. And a couple, a young couple in the church, uh, donated this altar to the church. Mr. and Mrs. Chum Ampofo. Mr. and Mrs. Chum Ampofo. She says later on at the right time, she will tell us the reason why this donation. And we are so grateful to all of them for coming. I haven't ended. We also have the wife of the moderator here with us, Mrs. Florence. Manti, here with us. And then close by here, we have the wife of a former IGP, Mr. Paul Kui, Mrs. Rojana Kui, also here with us, representing uh, Mr. Kui. We also have uh, former IGP, Mr. C.O. Lamte, also here with us. Thank you, sir, for coming. We are so grateful. She came very early. We are so, so grateful to you. And then um, I will not take my seat till I 
mentioned the beginning of this building project there was this man who was with us but for proximity sake he relocated to new achimota close to his residence um, between the two of us i insisted that i would not let him leave but the moment i left the place he sneaked out mr john Crantin is here a former senior former senior elder of the church former senior elder of the church he said also i would definitely come i would definitely come we started with him we started with him we are so grateful that you are all here we also have the wife of the past um, presiding bishop uh, most reverend dr abaji mensa uh, mrs chris abaji mensa also here with us and then we have um, senior officers, retired officers also here. Well, the president of Napo himself is here. And so he has some of his people also gathered here. Please, wherever you are, can you stand for us to um, acknowledge you? Thank you. You are most welcome. Now, I'll come back and then I'll end with that one. Um, the preacher, um, the right Reverend Professor G.O. Manti, moderator of the Presbyterian Church and the current chairman of the Christian Council of Ghana. Thank you, sir. We also have the most Reverend Dr. Paul K. Boaf, presiding bishop of the Methodist Conference, also here with us. And then we have uh, most Reverend Dr. Robert K. Abwaji Mensa past presiding bishop of the Methodist Church and a past associate chaplain of the church also. Behind um, Dr. Abuaji Mensa is the General Secretary of the Christian Council of Ghana, the Reverend, Cyril, Reverend Dr. Cyril Fayusi, also with us. We have next to Dr. Fayusi, the Right Reverend Dr. E.G. L. Chumba, a past, past, past Bishop of Kofuria Diocese of the Methodist Church and my elder brother. We also have Prophet Christopher Yao Ano. Um, he is an inspirer, a leader, a teacher, and an encourager also to me and he is in charge of the Holy Ghost Temple at Frafraha ICGC. Uh, behind him, we have the special assistant to the moderator. Also, for the Ajram Reverend George Komi. Yes. George Labi. Reverend George Labi. Fachame. Fachame. You are also most welcome. Thank you very much. And then we have Reverend Dr. Martin Obing, Senior Lecturer at the Trinity Theological Seminary, also here with us. Um, next to Dr. Obing is our own Reverend William Osu Ekuamwa. He is an associate chaplain in the Ghana Police Church. Now, behind me, we have Reverend E.T. Adusu. Reverend E.T. Adusu um, is a past associate chaplain of this church. One of the associate ministers that I worked with is now on supernotion. And then we have Reverend Andrew J.T. Ojau. He is also a past, a past associate chaplain of the church now with the Accra Red Church. Next to Reverend Ojewu is um, DSP Reverend Emilia Quist. She is a Presbyterian minister and with the Ghana Police Service. Then next is our own very Reverend Dr. Clara Joyce Danka. So we are so grateful to you all for 
your time, for your resources and your energies to keep even with keep faith with us and stay till this time. It is a joyous time, and I pray that your time that is spent here will not be wasted. But the Lord will bless you out of this number of minutes or hours that you have spent here. Since 8 o'clock, many of you have been here, and we are so, so grateful. Finally, I want to acknowledge the planning committee of this dedication service. Please, wherever you are, can you stand for us to acknowledge your presence? The planning committee members. We are so grateful to you for all your efforts, for all your sacrifices. Where is Elder Duke Kofi? He's outside. Some of them, since the beginning of the service, are behind the scenes working to make sure that everything goes well. We are grateful to all of you. Once again, we thank you and bless you for your time together with us. I am Frank Jumwa Shumba. Tomorrow at 8.30 a.m., we will have a special Thanksgiving service, a time to dance, sing, and celebrate, and give glory to God Almighty. 8.30 tomorrow morning, God willing, we will all meet here. We will all meet here. Thank you very much. Singing band. Yeah, yeah, do more.